team tonight. I, I got actual soda, so I get oh. it. As opposed to? Uh, iced tea and coffee. Like, I just... Oh. I added 20 uh, pounds. Have, I'm I would really normally be, have a cocktail or something. But... Or just go whiskey and call yeah. it at that. Is that what you got tonight, whiskey? Yeah, man. Oh, damn. I don't have class right now. I'm, I'm free. Damn, give me a whiskey! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm T Money Morgan. <laughs> I can see T Money the whole show now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine, T Money. You can uh, call me Flower if you want to. <laughs> dude, no joke. I literally had one of my kids the other day look at me and go, Dad, has anybody ever named their kid Apple? And I was like, Oh, buddy. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. Somebody's definitely named their kid Apple. But has like, there were other parents sold- around. So I tried to be like, super like i'm sure somebody has some but i was like yeah they did uh anyway this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road it's funny in the description we talk about uh tangential and we i've tangented three times in the introduction so uh as always we're socially distanced i'm still in the midwest ross is on the east coast and tate's all the way on the other coast right Mm -hmm, yeah in oregon Woo! nailed it i knew I start looking at I, I internet stock people try to guess where they're from for this show. So got close enough. Um, where do you want to start, Ross? I guess we'll talk about the news. Not that anything happens between a you know a Tuesday show and a Thursday show. <laughs> yeah, we but we, we 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 put out a lot of emails to people, and normally about like half to a quarter of people say yes to recording, and literally everyone has said yes lately. So we're recording like every every other day. We're just got another show lined up. So. Yeah, stacked. So <laughs> well, you are because you said yes. Yeah, you're one of the good ones. And also, you like Toyotas, so yeah. Oh man, um, yeah. I was just looking at your show notes. This LX six hundred uh, actually looks pretty beat. It does. So so, so right last now. show we talked about the. Are guests allowed to do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Guests are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. Ah. Uh, um, uh, almost. We almost should whatever the fuck they want. We, we, I don't know if we told him he could say fuck, but yeah, we do put an explicit tag on it. So you can. Is that my kids again? That's your kids again. God damn it. Every yep. show. Every time. Sometimes the Mac the has a mind of its own. Yeah, well, they're cute kids. They're not bad. They look good <laughs> and then they start talking and you're like, oh, help us. Anyway. There's just four voices at the same time. So anyway, so this Lexus LX 600 uh off-roadified by is it is it joust j-a-o-s i I have no idea i've seen their name before but i don't know if it's if it's pronounced the way it's spelled or if it's said the way it's spelled but yeah so last show we talked about the 300 series yep that was modified down in straya and now we're talking about a uh a a 600 you keep saying straya i'm gonna make fun of you do it. So this is the replacement for the Land Cruiser, right? Like yes. it's not going to handle cruiser anymore. Yep. So the Lexus has said that they're they're going to give us a standard trim here in the U.S., which is basically mm-hmm. the Land Cruiser trim, but they're calling it standard. So it's like yeah, uh, mm-hmm. more reliable off road type stuff. This this one I will comment on the blacked out grill is not completely blacked out. So it's actually I actually. The other ones look like shredder with all the chrome and metal on the front mm-hmm. of them. This this one's not bad. This one looks pretty good. So the long and the short of it is 20 inch Anki wheels. It's got Toyo Open Countries. Uh, the AT3 is the all terrains 285, 55, 20, which is probably a substantially expensive tire. As much as we love the Toyos, that is a, a 20 inch wheel for a 285 yeah, is is going to cost more than some vehicles I've owned. Um, they did lightweight front and rear skids and that's, that's it. They blacked some things out. They put some flares on and I mean, it looks awesome. And maybe the it's, flares are what I'm noticing the most because probably. the other, other versions we've seen haven't had the flares, have they? Yeah. I actually like this with flares. I usually don't like flares yeah. on offer versions because usually you put on side steps and flares, which to me just are something to scrape off. Uh, but <laughs> True that. Good on there. Yeah. It looks Yeah. I got a little you know, without, shot. without the contrast flares, it's a pretty 
like slab sided kind of thing. It's got mm. the box flares over each wheel well, but it, it's, you know, there's not much in the way of like. So you're, you're talking about here on this line being the box flare, right? That's the box mm -hmm. flare. That's, that's the fender. They boxed okay. out the fenders. Yeah, so this then, this this contrast fender really helps. Yeah, it does. It does. It's it almost a good. callback to the eighty series in my mind, which is one of the hardest things to replace on an eighty series. Is color yeah. matching, <laughs> color I matching fender flares. <laughs> I tore mine off and filled in the holes. Ooh, you went you As went you Venezuelan do. style. I don't know. I they weren't there when I bought it. Yeah, no. actually, so they were already. Torn off. <laughs> that was. Hey. That's something I've seen a bunch of times as guys are guys in South America were like, why, why are you guys having fender issues? Ours, ours don't have any. I was like, mm. oh, okay. Like, you can't have fender issues if you don't have fenders. Yeah. Um, I want to know punch, about these lightweight like skids though. Cause are they like the TRD skids that are just plastic? I, I don't they're, know. They're not, so like they're mud guards, not actual skid plates. Right. That's my understanding. So, you know, skid plates over the last few years, they went from steel to aluminum and now they're doing like composite plastics, mm -hmm. which on something that weighs a thousand to 2000 pounds, like a UTV, they work. You can replace them twice as often as you replace something made of metal, but they work and they save weight for something like this. That's going to weigh between 5,000 and 6,000 pounds. I'm skeptical. <laughs> you're going to get so gnarly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, shit. we're, we're talking such a small segment of the, the actual buyers who will actually go and, and right. Well, and a hundred percent of those people are like, is NATO, you know, I mean, yeah, they're all, they're all in Africa or something that people are actually going to wheel these things. <laughs> it's the, and the WHO or whatever the UN. That would you be, can, oh, UN. Sorry. Yeah. Not NATO. <laughs> if, sorry, if you I, can, I, spend that, that kind of money on those skids you can afford to replace the skids or fix whatever gets fucked up by not having metal underneath the truck yeah i don't know uh, i think also, it looks it's the first version i've seen of the lx that i actually really like the hood i, I never noticed how how aggressive that like cavity in valley the is. Yeah. yeah well this well, is the new the the Twitter Twitter design language right? they have this lower jowl like on the new tundra is just really it just looks gross to me um, but this, they have it lifted enough where it, it looks, it looks fine, but it just, it, they I would look like snow plows right now. And I don't, I don't like it. They do look like snow plows. Oh, confirm. Yeah. We, we talked about Tundra on the last episode quite a bit and we're like, mm. I mm. saw the new TRD, uh, uh, test vehicle down at the mint 400 this year, the long travel one, like they, that they, they built, um, so it was like the special vehicles edition, not just they're, they're off the shelf when it was pretty, it was mm. pretty dope. They do good things when they set their mind to it. Yeah. Not like the TRD RAV4. I don't know. I haven't seen that. That's not good. Hydrobles. So yeah. All right. What do you what do you got here with Raptor and and so we know there's a Bronco Raptor coming. We know there's a Ranger Raptor in other places in the world. Supposedly they're gonna bring the Ranger Raptor here. The two were just photographed next to each other Ooh. Um, you don't get the scale of the bronco raptor because we've seen the bronco raptor next to some other things and it's comically enormous um but it it does show that the ranger raptor actually has some stance to it it's got some it's got some uh hips are the wrong phrase for the front side but like it, you, it, it, the camo's deceptive on like, you can definitely yeah. see that there's some tender pop. Like if you punch to the next picture from the back, you can see how much they actually widened the thing because the current Ranger in person is like awkwardly skinny. You know, they tried to just, yeah, like... I see it. Um, and this is, this is my beef. I was going to wait for this Raptor Bronco and we have a relationship with Bronco and I was, I told this to Ford that they have an ugly ass baby because that those fenders are absolutely atrocious on the Raptor Bronco of how of how high this goes and how far it yes, goes it's out. just like why didn't you do the the F one fifty Raptor thing I mean the 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 Lexus you just showed us has has better looking box flares than they should have done this is just an afterthought like this is just weird so because yeah, the, the follow up question is you guys know that the standard Bronco has those quick release fender flares. Yeah. Are these going to be quick release? And does that mean that we're going to see these things running around with fucking five inches of poke 
all no. the time. Sure. Um, yeah, and, and they said that the, the aftermarket will probably pick some of that stuff up too. I, I just I, I thought these were so atrocious. I I went back to a, a red cab five speed two door red cab two door. I just think that's the ugliest thing. I'm and I'm sorry. And I'm, it, I'm it, it, those are just those are gross. It's very disproportionate. Like gross or something. I mean, given it'll probably look amazing when they have press photos and it's going to look as wild as they can possibly make it look. Um, but it's a Hot Wheels. That's it. You know, it, yeah. it's going to look like a like somebody went on MS Paint and drew a trophy truck and uh, and copy and paste it into real life. Well, I'll take their trophy truck version. That thing was dope. Yeah, they we had, had SPT or whatever. You guys probably talked about that one. We had Vaughn Gittin Jr. on the show talking yeah. about the, the Hammers truck. Cool. Dude, that thing, yeah. Nuts. Was the 4,400 class? Yep. But it was like it's like one hundred and thirty thousand or something. It's like it wasn't yeah. probably that much more expensive than what the Raptor is going to be. But you have a race track, <laughs> not a windshield, sure, but whatever. Oh my god, what it, what happened in in our chat today? Somebody uh, somebody bought not in our chat, but somebody posted that somebody purchased a two door Sasquatch Bronco at Meekum for ninety three, right? Uh, ninety three five, I believe. Ninety three five for a fucking two door Bronco. And it uh, was, I think it was a black diamond. Or no, it was a first cares? edition. It was a first okay. edition. I heard that the right. prices are, are coming are coming down on those pretty quick. So sure hope so. That's that's just it's, it's like Meekum. It, it is Meekum, but is that I, I hope that's peak insanity. Just oh terrible. well. Where people, yeah, people were paying well over 100 for some of the first editions early on, right? The four doors, like Sasquatches. Uh, I don't know. Were they actually going for that? Or were they, because there were a bunch that were listed on, on dealer websites for like 110, 120. So $93,500, 21 <laughs> Badlands edition. So not even first edition, Badlands edition. It's the 27 and it's a two door. And it, so, like what the second highlighted bullet is fourteen thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars in options. Um, um you spend ninety three thousand dollars. Yeah, so they paid fifty percent over uh, over sticker at least. It it so, looks okay, but it, it that's just a know. rich dude that's like, I want a Bronco. Like I, you know, ninety three grand buys you a V eight supercharged Defender ninety, or almost. Gets you within spitting distance. Ninety three grand is the down payment on this thing. <laughs> Segway. So Segway. Good job, Chris. So this is the uh, sod. What does sod stand for? Uh, stone something. Stone off road design. It says on the side of the truck. Stone off road design. And it, it is a camper that is. It's it's a four door Unimog with. What is the equivalent of a New York studio apartment on the back of it? Nice studio in New York. Like a, yeah. re- like a really nice studio. Really nice. Like- Not only that, the funny thing, if you go back to yeah. that picture, just so Tate oh. can, can see the scope and scale of this thing. Yeah. That's a razor. That is a Polaris razor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perched on the very back. On the back, <laughs> about eight feet in the air. It looks tiny. So Given, this is an excellent render. And, and I, nothing yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a render because in my mind i'm like does the razor stay there or does it slide into the cab and that thing lift up but i'm assuming it stays um, out there no you you break stand it and jump it off of the platform uh, uh yeah you guys had the earth cruiser guys on i noticed i was going through your, your yeah. list of yes those are they've been out to the gambler they are oh yeah associates yeah they're based out of bend isn't everyone? I mean, between Bend and like Bozeman, Billings, and, like oh. and north yeah. of like Denver, that that covers yeah, the like, overland scene in America. Like every time I want to look at new jobs and marketing with any of those companies, they're like, "Where do you want to move?" And I'm like, "Nowhere. I don't. I don't want to." <laughs> it's always out. So yeah, so that's the news, except for the last note, which Chris wants to touch on. 
So Cox Auto came out with an article today that the average new car price is now over $47,000. So we've joked on the show for a long time that 50 is the new 35. Mm -hmm. And holy crap, are we approaching that fast? Like, I I think the first time I said that, I I was like, oh, it's a fun joke. Like, but no, it's legitimately $47,000 is the average new car price right now. What's kind of screwed up is that I I remember talking about a news article to the same effect pretty shortly after we started the show two years ago. Yeah. And I think at that time it was 35. It was was around in there. Which means we've... My favorite tweet I saw today was from one of the other automotive journalists. It was like, do you work in an industry where you can no longer afford the product? Because that's that's automotive journalism at this point. Like, nope. I know I know. Jeff said that certain companies pay well, but like a majority of publications don't pay enough for us to all go out and buy fifty thousand dollars cars. Which is why you normally see a lot of journalists run around and used Hondas and Toyotas and things like that. Yep. You see, all, you, I I drive around in a used Pontiac vibe. <laughs> Vibes are kind of red. As in, uh, well, hold on. Is it a GT? I got I got a GT and I have an all-wheel drive automatic. So I pack <laughs> you have two vibes. Uh, are you I'm the only five. person in America with two Pontiac vibes? Dude, yeah, dude, yeah no, the, the, the GT is, them out. is dope. And I, I got in on the on the GTs before Doug did his video. So okay. I've been, said, I've, been, Lotus I've been keen to the GTs <laughs> for a long time. I love because I'm a Corolla uh purist. Uh, okay. XR I love Corollas. So yeah. the, the Pontiac Vibe GT is the highest performance, rarest Corolla wagon on the planet and so <laughs> i actually sold go. my corolla to my buddy and so i my only corollas i have are my two vibes oh, so, so great underappreciated and this was a, a blanket statement long before doug got his hands on one and we love doug but the vibe gt and matrix xrs are like they're not dynamic powerhouses but they are you know if you think about them in the same capacity as like honda element that was concurrent you know they're so good i'm scrolling for pictures so fast i gotta find this well, thing. <laughs> you, can, you can go on to my instagram or uh, i that's the one I, I took i made it into the suzuki escudo from playstation 2 i took oh, i'm definitely gonna five. look for that i saw this one the other day in a, a, a parking garage and it's Uh-oh. literally pontiac vibe with honda wheels acura yeah. ns extra rsx wheels Right. Well, so RSX wheels with Honda center caps, and then it's a Toyota yeah. underneath. So, That's great. Like, it was just like, how many manufacturers can we get on one hatchback? Dude, that thing actually, that if thing you threw a Toyota flat. badge on that today. Yeah. yeah. But it's more fun to have Pontiac badges. What's a Pontiac? Nobody knows. Oh, I own, I own four. <laughs> I have a 70 Tempest on 33s i've got the two vibes and then i have a a koenig wide body testarossa replica on a fear <laughs> amazing that sentence uh, has to end with fear there's no other way that sentence yeah ends. well especially when you're talking about <laughs> our uh right so wait, when you were saying in budget of mortals vibe, which instagram my gambler 500 instagram the gambler 500 one yeah, at the Gambler 500. Uh, I took it to the 400, and I jumped the crap out of it. Uh, um, okay. it's, probably, it's probably a little bit of a deep pull in there. Um, are you able to... I, Is that I, an I, obligation? If you go to the Mint 400, do all four tires have to come off the ground? Um, well, we hosted our Hoopy Cross uh, Rally Cross series there at right. the Mint this year on site. Um, and it was an absolute blast. And we also did a, um, a trail cleanup for the Bronco Wild Fund. I saw that one too, yeah. Um, you know, is it the I, red one with like lights on the front? And Yeah, 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 yeah. With the case yeah, yeah. on the front? Yeah. I got it. I got it. I, got it. I, was, I was going there fast. Go. Yeah, there it, there it is. is. Bam. And yeah, I'm see? the wing. <laughs> oh, we built it all out of ABS plastic and, um, and, uh, and uh, JB Weld. JB Weld sent us a pallet of of two-part epoxy and we glued the whole thing together a pallet how much of the pallet did you get through the whole damn pallets on there (laughs) 
are those ATV tires? Yeah, yeah, they're uh, Interco um, vampires. Vampires. Oh, yeah, and then there's spacer adapters on there, and then those those wheels are flipped. They're inside out to get more. Just to get more poke, yeah. yeah. That's our wide, you know, basically our big hole because it's wide. It's real it wide on a, on a car trailer, uh, but it is, and it did amazing. Actually, we had Zach from Hoonigan uh, came down with his buddy Mike Tornabeen, who people might know better as uh, Don Mazzetti from Bro Science on YouTube. Okay, um, and they came and they raced, and so Zach, uh, uh, who's famous for jumping in a lot of cars, uh, jumped the crap out of this too, and it lived. Um, I mocked <laughs> him later. Lived. I mocked him for not breaking it later. And then he said that it, it, it would be a, a smoking heap of m- melted plastic. Um, maybe next time he gets his hands on it. So challenge and I accepted really, is what yeah, we hear. Dude, my, my back hurts just watching that video. <laughs> Seriously. It landed great. I mean, the, the struts are blown on it now, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it did really well. That's, that so was, that's a fun car. That's one I'll keep forever. Is this one that says Milwaukee on the side yours too? How many hours do you that have? That is thing? concept for the <laughs> Testarossa. That, okay. That's the that's the Koenig wide body Testarossa that I'm the Fiero. I'm, the Fiero, yeah, 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 yeah. So that that's up at my shop. That's but obviously I've <laughs> very poorly photoshopped. <laughs> I was trying to bait Milwaukee into getting in on it, but I did get AEM, which recently recently got purchased by Holly. So they're actually committed to doing all the electronics. I just nice. need to find someone to commit batteries. And then I think uh, I'll source the powertrain off of eBay because eBay is one of our supporting partners too. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, and then, so yeah. And uh, yeah, I want to do, I've never built an EV before. So I think that's our next project is just do a Tesla, do a full rear Tesla drive unit, dump it you under know, there. It's still got the Fiero sticks in it. Everybody talks about horsepower per pound, all right? Or, or weight per horsepower. Nobody right. talks about number of hours per dollar <laughs> that's got to be by the time you swap that thing that's going to be up there for uh for for top of the podium well i mean the rear drive units you can get for about five grand okay. um if you were to use open source components um you can do most of the the, the um, control unit stuff in in the the hardware uh for i mean like five if you're trying to build it yourself for like five to ten maybe less maybe five and then batteries are the real expensive part so you're like you know at least if you're trying to do you know you can go do if you want to do the old lead acids that's a lot cheaper but if you're trying to go buy you know the tesla packs or something you're probably in it for another another 10 so i'm probably sell set and done gonna be into it for for retail cost of 30 of which i want to be actual spend nothing but. And have it be driven, <laughs> right? Because it's that's how yeah. the and I'm not, you know, be as for build uh, or you know, hoon again by any means. And so, you know, the, the sponsors aren't aren't running, you know, knocking down my door or trying to throw cash at me. But we do have a lot of good partnerships, uh, such as like O'Reilly Auto Parts and Holly and those guys that that do help out with this stuff. So I found more vibe pictures. I'm, yeah. I'm, vibe, yeah, they, I'm yeah, vibing like, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so the other one's going to stay bone stock. I, and I'm okay. going to make it like a soccer mom. Well, bone, okay. I already pulled the rear end out and welded the rear end. Uh, <laughs> but, but I want it to look stock. So I'm going to take it to Moab. And so I want to be out in like Hell's Revenge uh, and make it look Whoa. like I just took a, like a wrong turn off the freeway. That's and have all the <laughs> out there being like, dude, what are you doing out here? I'm like, oh man, we just came to check okay. out Moab. Let's well, back out. up. Uh, so it's an all-wheel drive system. Is it front until it sends senses slip and then sends it to the back? Okay, so the, the obviously the Vibe GT for everyone, you know this, but is is front wheel drive. They didn't make a GT in all wheel drive. Um, the other one is 50-50 front to back. So there is no there is oh. no center differential in those. Um, it has a clutch back uh, mm. that leads to the back, but at you know full at full tilt, it should be fully engaged, and so I shouldn't I shouldn't have a problem. So, but I didn't just, want. You just have a permanently locked rear diff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it makes that nice little like uh, uh, a well. It just, <laughs> yeah, it does that a little bit. <laughs> but it's long enough. It, it's not that bad. It's not. It's not going to be a daily, you know, per se. Um, it's just. But I would like to actually drive it to Moab, uh, and then wheel <laughs> with it at home. That's see for for Ross. It's a much shorter drive for him to Moab than you to Moab. So when he's talking about, we, where are you, Ross? I'm in Connecticut. 
How's that close to Moab? That's not closer. No, I, I, no I'm saying for Tate, oh, it's so much for easier Tate for him. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> to we drive go to Moab. something with a welded div out. Yeah, 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 I go to Moab every year. Um, I'd have to so. replace the tires by the time I got to Moab if I if I drove out there with a welded diff. <laughs> hey, hey, man, if you're not turning, it's not a big deal. Yeah, just don't turn. You get like 40 miles a gallon on that thing, so you shouldn't have to stop for gas that much. Oh shit. So, I have an odd question. Yeah. What What is the is it a, an obsession or a, a curiosity with things converted to cab over? Because oh. as I roll down this page, there's quite yeah, a few yeah. things that oh, used dude. to be and regular. Like, I used to be like obsessed with cab overs, um, but I think it's more of an obsession with like number one, um, like the juxtaposition, like the Miata, like the blue Miata that's on there. I built for Jesse when she came out to the to the gambler, and it's still my probably my prized possession. Um, uh, doing things with cars that weren't the original intention for. And so it's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to I, Arctic trucks, my friend, like I went to go visit them in Iceland. Um, we got a great relationship with them. I've kind of modeled my land cruiser after theirs, their stuff. Uh, and that's definitely not one of my most liked. <laughs> <cat books. laughs> I think it's uh, awesome. <laughs> but it's something that I can do like, you know, part of my, you know, like the four legs to the stool of the, the, the pirate ship, which is the gambler is social media. And so people really engage with it. Half of them like it, half of them hate it. Uh, and so we all know that like, you know, that like internet hate and trolling is, is fuel for, for, you know, eyeballs. And then I get, I get paid from companies to get eyeballs. And so this yeah. is all part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, I, I, my day job is in marketing and my favorite thing is everyone's like well the best marketing is emotional and i would constantly remind people that anger is an emotion Mm -hmm. and they would be like yeah but we don't want that one i'm like yeah but it's just just one one a month piss them off and then everything else can be love lively floaty whatever like but just one a month i just want one angry post a month i'm like one a day (laughs) yeah there you go uh and like we 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 have the problem we're an event series and so I have to keep the, you know, assholes online are, are different than assholes in person. And so part of my job is to make sure I don't have assholes that come to my event. And so, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> uh, and that, so that, that's all part of it. We don't dabble. We don't do politics, um, but we make sure that love, love and respect uh, are something yeah. that are a mainstay of what we do. And so we don't, we don't like, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's just call them narrow-minded or ignorant people. Um, so that as makes long as you really have fun and pick up trash. That makes a lot of sense just because I don't know that we've given an overview of what the gambler is yet on the show. Oh, I, I assume most people know. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But I, I mean, I've loved it since I think I don't think I was aware of it until I was watching B is for builds build a BMW and show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Do you want me to do you want me to do a yeah, recap? Quick, yeah, quick yeah. elevator. The, let's give us the elevator pitch. Okay, the elevator pitch. Yeah, you asked me to do this when I inter- introduced myself, but my name is Tate Morgan, <laughs> and uh, I created the Gambler 500, um, along with, uh, you know, like 20 friends back in 2014, and it all stemmed, it's an off-road navigation adventure rally for uh, cheap, impractical, or historically unreliable cars. Um, you know, it, in the beginning, it was all friends, um, and it was a, it was a timed event, um, but it was since we were all understood that we weren't here to put anybody's life in danger. It was all the, you know, an agreement that no one was going to speed that it was all about navigation. So I created waypoints that went from Portland, Oregon, all the way out into central Oregon over the mountains, like in this zigzag pattern on these random roads. Cause we wanted to stay <laughs> off the highway of course. And so, um, but it was timed. And so if you took a wrong turn, you had to navigate the whole way. So now, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't turn notes cause you had to get to different waypoints. And my goal was to always make it. So it wasn't an obvious route. You were trying to figure out on the fly, which was the best way to go. Super fun. Um, uh, you know, some lifelong friends that we created back then. And, um, uh, and we never made, it was never intended to be a, a business or commercially available. We didn't really market it. It was just word of the mouth. So it grew to uh, 60 cars in 2016. And so the rule was kind of $500 ish cars, but no one was checking receipts. Nobody cared. You know, if you showed up in a, in a Peugeot of, of any sort, 
uh, universally <laughs> understood that that's a shitty car. Uh, but if you showed up with like a Toyota 4Runner that didn't rear end it or something, it'd be like, bro, like that's not going to break down. Like yeah. that's a very capable mm-hmm. car. Like so, it was all in the spirit of of it. And so, uh, yeah, our first car was a Nissan uh, NX. Um, yeah, that's a that's a great example. Just a um, lot of economy. Like that guy's a little. Okay. Overbuilt. That well, guy's this overbuilt. is this is Hoopty Cross. This is Hoopty okay. Cross that you're at right there. So there's a Corolla or a Camry right there. On the left, uh, a lot sorry. of Camrys. <laughs> uh, uh, there's the Camry. The Corolla was about one back there. A whole bunch so of races Hoopy Cross, there. Hoopy Cross is a race. Okay. Uh, 100 a race around a mile and a half track. Uh, my partner Chuck Brazier, uh, uh, in that he he runs. He's a race director. He's a rally cross guy. But I mean, it's still hilarious to have a a side by side racing in the same race as a geo metro they're in different classes because you know that's you know since it is a timed event people somewhat care um we just actually had our big finale we sent uh five drivers down to rally ready driving school uh in uh, austin texas with uh texas dave down texas there texas dave and, texas dave and gotta do two two days of a uh, rally drive and i went i gotta go with him too it was awesome he comes up almost every show i'm sending him a oh, text he? right now i'm sending him a text literally text right now tell him to get his head out of respond to my text dave <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i yeah i don't know I, he's uh i don't like starting text strings with dave because they he's very good at verbal jousting yes and, he uh, is hmm. he's incredibly intelligent don't tell him i said that uh and he doesn't drink and so he doesn't ever have that mental fog um must be nice I, I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, like, it's just, you have to be on with that dude. Um, but he's brilliant and uh, just a freaking in, insane behind the wheel. Um, and a huge, just fan of rally sport, not pretentious, um, but still like, you know, like very uh, intelligent dude. So I like him. He, um, we're, we're fans. We've had, we've had him on for one episode. I'm trying to get him back. <laughs> dude, I was looking through your guys' episodes. Yeah. Like, Emmy Hall, the yep. super good friend of mine, like uh, I know Sean Holman and all like and then of course like Demuro is a legend. I don't know, yep. Doug. Um, I've stopped talking about Holman in any other capacity other than right wing Johnny. Right wing Johnny. <laughs> yeah, because he and Johnny Lieberman are like the same person, but one's left wing and one's right wing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> and that's what John Sean, said. They Sean's the big Jeep motor guy, right? Huh? Sean's the big Jeep guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's got a, a a built JKU R. Come on no, to my page JL. before. He's come onto my Instagram before, and uh, and it seems like he was a little upset with me shitting on Jeeps uh, so much. But I actually have a really good long story that actually has to do with Jeep corporate, which is and nobody knows that's the reason why oh, I actually not shit on Jeeps so much. <laughs> We got time if you want to. Uh, you want to tell that whole story if, right you now? Want to tell you tell the whole. I told I told Ed, uh, what's his face, that I'd do it on this show, but he he passed. Okay. What's the car truck guy? Ed oh, Bolian. Ed right? Bolian. Yeah. 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 They they pass on that one. You really missed out, Ed. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. Wait. I was still explaining the gambler though. Yep. If we have time, where we can do another episode. Um. <laughs> So Gambler, $500 cars, all for fun. We had a video that um, my buddy worked for Chubby's. Uh, and then my buddy, uh, Andy, uh, who, who's a partner, mostly on like the apparel side of stuff that we do, um, uh, may, uh, compiled a bunch of video clips from cell phones that we all had. And then Chubby's made it into a little like a vi- That was their marketing plan was to was to create other. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Dude, I, I'm literally for the audio listener. Every time you hear him laugh, I'm just sharing another cab over concept. that has been <laughs> oh, rendered. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and the dent side, the four dent sides really would work out well. Um, Dude, that would look fantastic. But, I would drive that. Uh, <laughs> I actually have, I have a huge, I have a whole uh, library um, of them on gambler500.com and the updates uh, blog section. There's like, there's like 50 of them all in the same deal. Um, if you really want to dork out on the cab overs, some are bad, some are good. But like I said, it's it's all about evoking reactions there. There's a uh, there's like a John Ward type icon business out there that can do stuff like just that. Make just cab just cab actualizing <laughs> all of these fucking crazy. It'd have to be for amputees though, because I never get oh. the, the the that part right. Yeah, there there wasn't a lot of legroom in that Ford. <laughs> no, no legroom. Ross, did I say something wrong? No, you're good. Keep going. Okay. More about the gambler. 
Uh, cab, cab over the world is what it's called on the website. I love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Oh, you found it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that video got like 50 million views, and then um, they found um, they found us on Facebook, um, and I immediately everybody started asking if they'd come to the gambler, and I immediately shut it all down. Um, because uh, we didn't really want the attention. We weren't set up to have these people out there with us. Um, but then a bunch of farming accounts, basically used to be a business that people had when anything would go semi-viral, they'd go buy up fake Facebook uh, pages and then get followers and then sell those pages to other businesses. So then change the name. So they'd have, you know, they basically have a bunch of followers already. Yeah, that's that was one of the better ones. I love Should that one. I love a square body. That's not a square uh, body anymore. And so but at that point, one. I went back. In. My wife is a contract attorney, um, okay. and so she she hooked me up with getting all my IP straight, all my my uh, name and logo uh, trademark. The logo, Woo! here it hasn't changed since day one. I, I drew that on the back of a Coors Light box <laughs> with a Sharpie marker. Um, as you do, as as, as you, you do. do. Uh, and so after that, we just said, hey, screw it, man, but we're going to keep it the same. Let's show up to the parking lot uh, the morning of and we'll do this. And at that point, um, uh, Jesse Combs uh, uh, had reached out with her show uh, on Autoblog um, called The List. And yep. she was like, you know, we we're going to come do the gambler, yada, yada. We're like, will you build us a couple of cars? And, and actually, we built them a crew car, too. And then uh, uh, Fred Williams from Dirt Every Day. And yep. Dave, uh, they came out, they brought their show. And then my buddy, Ian Harrison, who's the, the editor for um, Recoil. And so all these bigger media people started coming out. And I was like, you know what? We went from the previous year had been 60 cars. No, 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 no. 30 cars, 60 people. And I remember being kind of overwhelmed that night uh, out in Prineville in the middle of the, the, the National Forest. Yeah, there she is. Well, that's me driving, but that's, that's Jesse's car. Uh, and Larry Chen, Larry Chen took that video. Friend of uh, show, guest of show. Yeah, I know. I saw. I saw that. I saw that on there. I was all excited. Larry is freaking. He's a goat. Like talk about a dude who's oh, yeah. just yeah. so dialed and so good at what he does. Um, best of the best. So uh, instead, so I was like, okay, I was overwhelmed with sixty people. I remember sitting there that night. I was like, man, this is crazy, dude. I think this is about as big as it needs to get. <laughs> and then the next year, I was like, well, maybe like a couple hundred cars are going to show up. 863 cars showed up and like 1800 people or more like 2000 was that, odd people was that the year that fred was there like <laughs> yeah, fred and dave were yeah. there yeah Holy yeah because i didn't like want to do i didn't want to have like registration or anything man i was just like just show up dude and so i rented portland meadows the whole the when they had the racetrack here uh in portland and uh we we completely filled that parking lot up in the road miles in every direction and it took us 10 hours to launch all these cars. And I had rented Hoodoo. So I'd rented this ski, the ski resort up in the Cascades. I was like, hey, it'd be cool. Like, you know, we'll fill up half your parking lot. You know, it should be like, you know, it should be fun. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I'm not an event guy. How many days was guy. this rally? It's It was just one night, two days. <laughs> two days and you had Saturday, 10 hours? Of Saturday, Christmas? Sunday. Oh, yeah. No, it took it took for Well, they, we started launching at 4 a.m. So I got there super early because I knew people would get there super early. And then we just started launching them at four. And then I had to go up to the mountain. And I, I would talk to the mountain manager. And I was like, hey, man, like, um, we're going to have a few more people than we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and they were super chill. I got I to gotta give it to Hoodoo. They were, they were super fun. And I got to give it to all the attendees because we filled up this entire ski resort. And then a mile in every direction on both sides of the road were just gambler cars Christ. parked all the way down. And like no fights, no, no issues whatsoever. Everybody was so cool that night and had, we had such a good time um, that we decided at the end of the end that, um, that we do it again. And then at that point, um, she was, it was about that point that I actually got diagnosed with testicular cancer. Sorry, it's this story. that was a twist I didn't see coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, and uh, and so in between then and and the next year, uh, dealing and I got really lucky. Diagnosed stage one, um, and obviously they, I lost old variety, but um, but I had the option to do a little wait and see on on chemotherapy and that sort of jazz. And so I was like, yeah, if I don't have to start chemo 
now because they said no, normally we just start you on chemo and just do preventative chemo but you know uh, to be honest you only have about 50 50 shot of it coming back and i was like well yeah let's just not do chemo and then the more the 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 uh, whatever your odds of living are is like 90 like 90 percent like this one it's one of the ones that you don't usually die from um did i have the, two other brothers who've had the it. john cruck i don't know uh, so I was hoping you were old enough to get that reference. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's the Lance Armstrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a much more recent notable personality than the one I picked <laughs> oh. from the mid '90s. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, wait, <laughs> I'm old, I'm older than you. Uh, I'm 41, so I got you by a year. See. <laughs> uh so yeah, so you're did okay. that, but... So the day yeah. away, you're still here. You're good. I'm still here. You're good. Uh, but I had a, I was That's I was doing a, a, a distribution and sales uh, for a, a large uh, manufacturer of roofing products, uh, Owens Corning, and uh, and it was just uh, all the travel I was I had to do and you know managing shingle sales was surprisingly really? stressful. Uh, uh, I and then worrying with all this crap, I wasn't I wasn't sleeping more than an hour a night, and that's not good for you when you're trying to keep something from eating your body from the inside. Uh, so I quit my job. And, uh, and then I just started focusing on gambler and I poured all my energy that wasn't going into my kids and my health uh, into this creative outlet. And that's where like all the foundation for all this stuff, you know, just started was just kind of me being bored on the internet. <laughs> so, so, so uh, not to dwell on, on the, sad and down shit. how how far into gambler existing were you when you were diagnosed oh it must have been it must have been like a couple of months after that year up at hoodoo after the so, 860 car yeah trip. yeah yeah in between right after you see jesse here uh racing the miata um who later uh, became a really good friend uh, we went into sturgis and hammers and in sema uh, uh mint 400 uh we sat in the car for like eight hours one one year i was driving her back her uh, her fiance terry was racing that year and we'd gone over to shoot it again so i got to uh pick her brain and hang out with really one of the coolest people that ever graced the the face of the earth so icons icons of the off-road and automotive scape freaking tragedy but oh she came out and raced she, she'd always said that our mini bike enduro was one of the funnest things she ever did and she won Hundred miles. Of course, she did. Of, course she, she did. of course she did. Of course she did. We had like 250 racers out there, and she was one of only two people to complete the hundred miles on their own, and she was the only woman to do it. So. Sounds about right. Um, so yeah, yeah, after that, it was just like, how do we, how do we make this, how do I make this, uh, my life, my life's work? You know, how do I have, you know, mm-hmm. you know, we always say you do what you love, and the money will follow. And so, and I had already had a couple unsuccessful businesses. So I, I put in my time with all that. I, I was over in Bend when the big crash in 08 happened. I had a real estate business, mm. um, countless other failed attempts at, at stuff. Uh, and so, um, you know, if you just do it, if you fail enough times, then something will stick. And this started to resonate with people. We kept it real pure, kept it to the, to this, this, uh, you know, fun, you know, fun is greater than rules motorsports so many times gets caught up with all these rules and regulations and and that's what happens when you race is because people you know just mm-hmm. have to narrow this focus down and if it's not about racing yeah. it's about like having fun and exploring and stewardship then all of a sudden everybody starts to relax a little bit you know somebody will still show up in you know in a 1992 foreigners their daily driver and they want to come hang out and see all the cool rigs and have fun and That'll be one in a thousand people. They'll be like, that didn't cost 500 bucks. And everyone else is like, shut up. <laughs> they're <laughs> here to have a good time. Yeah. Right? Like if they're on, if they're in line with the vibe, we can yeah. handle. Well, it'd be like going to NASCAR and in your 92 foreigner, someone would be like, that's, that's not a NASCAR. It's like, yeah, no, I'm just here, man. This is an event. I just want to be a part of it. Right. Leave me alone. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Let's somebody have that fun. We grew the apparel side of stuff. I wanted to be a brand. I wanted to focus more on brand, being a brand. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I've always held uh, Hoonigan on a really high pedestal of, the, of their culture and the way they run their, mm-hmm. their business. Um, so we decided to let people use the name and logo to, yeah, that was at the Mint. Um, the awesome. Use the name and logo uh, 
it to start other gamblers in other states as long as they weren't trying to profiteer off it, right? So yeah, I make money off Gambler because it's you know we created a blood, sweat, and tears of you know media. You know every time we go do Jay Leno's Garage or we do Hoonigan or Donut, that's that costs us a ton of money uh, out of pocket to market basically at that point. And so if people want to do what we used to do, which I never used to charge my friends for anything like that, that'd be that'd be so stupid. Um, great. Uh, uh, so if you want to use the name and logo the way we used to do it and not charge, uh, not try to make money off it. Great. Um, if you want to, you know, make it a business or something, then invent, you know, call it something different. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I encourage, always encourage people to do that. Cause why would I tell people not to do yeah. what I do? You know? So you've branched out on the event side and you've branched out on the apparel side and you, you're wearing a sweatshirt that's got whiskey across it in huge letters yeah. and, and on the website there's a, a page for whiskey what's that about um so I, you know i didn't want to squeeze all the the blood out of the one stone right like you know have this event uh be the, the be it and so i think there's kind of a ceiling with what you can do with events and so i wanted to use our reach to do things that i've always wanted to do and i hey there's jesse uh and so uh I love whiskey and I was like, there's no local brand called Pendleton that started uh, here at a, at an Oregon event called the Pendleton Roundup. Um, and so I was like, well, I love whiskey. I can make whiskey. And so we found a partner to make whiskey with um, the 503 distilling here. Just, you know, there was a couple miles down the road hmm. and we decided to, it's just one of those things that, you know, you throw a bunch of shit against the wall and you just, you know, something sticks. Every something once sticks. In a while. <laughs> whiskey stuff. We have, we have about sticks. 350 retailers. Um, in four oh, wow. different states. Yeah, we've got, uh, we were the fastest growing whiskey company in the state of Oregon in 2019. Uh, I think we're about the, the, let's say the 12th. It depends on how you, how you, how you want to say what, what's the biggest whiskey company, but we're in the, definitely the top 20 whiskey companies here uh, in the state of Oregon uh, currently. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, there's no money in whiskey unless, unless you're, <laughs> We charge thirty bucks, and that's it's like twenty nine ninety five or whatever. And I tell you what, there's 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 more blood and sweat and tears in that whiskey than actual whiskey. Wait, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, um, sounds like careful, we were diluting careful. our whiskey. Wait, a little weird. <laughs> uh, no, uh, blood's water based. Yeah. That's not good. Okay. Oh. it is good though. I'll get you. I'll get you guys some. Ooh, yeah, man. If, if you I ship east, would, no, no way. You else ship east. If you ship east, I'll give you some business. Good news, we're not in Utah. So you can ship yeah. stuff to us. Like, yeah. uh, um, no, we, have, we have a shipper who can ship to most states. Um, uh, royalbatch.com. Nice. Uh, com. So, yeah, the, the, and then we do, we do brand partnerships. And so, you know, that's kind of the reason why I focus so much on, on social media. Um, you know, we just uh, uh, signed on eBay Motors this last year. They're going to actually go over and take over Hoopty Cross, be the, the title sponsor for them. And nice. we've got a, a Riley Auto Parts, um, Yakima, uh, Leatherman, um, Leatherman. Nice. brands like Heat Wave Sunglasses, who, who I love. Those guys come out every single year. I thought they were just cool salespeople for a sunglass company. And that turns out they're the two owners that just like come out <laughs> to your party. I was like, Dude, you cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah since, since then it just kind of it just it, it's it's its own little beast um you know we don't get caught up in rules uh we added the 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 uh we added the the stewardship part that year one in hoodoo you know picking up trash and that's something that's really resonated with everyone um so it's a we have part of our competition is to see how much trash you can you can pick up um and we've done over a million pounds to date um between all of our that's different so great uh, Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Well, we, I mean, that's, you know, we talked about Bronco, uh, the, the Bronco Wild Fund. Uh, we're one of five nonprofits that they support um, with Tread Lightly, um, Outward Bound, National Forest Foundation, and the uh, State Parks Foundation. And so they, whenever we go out and do, uh, do trail cleanup, the, their money covers the, uh, the disposal portion of it, like all the dumpsters and stuff. So, and then we're, we're very unique in that we don't pay ourselves. There's no salary that comes out of our nonprofit. So I, we always wanted to keep full transparency with that because I see too many nonprofits abuse their status by just kind of being profit centers for their for their staff and, and directors. And so, as executive director, um, I don't I don't pay, I don't pay myself out of that. I mean, mm-hmm. That's good to hear. And the cleanup thing's huge too. I mean, shit, all of us have been on the trail 
middle of nowhere hoping for peace and nature and everything and and oh, yeah. upon like a fucking toilet or you know a snickers wrapper yeah if you're out there in public man, just heartening. <laughs> And and it's funny, I've, I've really, I've got a good, you know, you just get somewhere, you know, we go down to Moab every time and there are people who have said, oh, there's the trails are really clean in Moab, you're not going to find anything. I was like, yeah, if you, if you think like a shithead, I bet I can find some trash and sh- sure as heck and A, you just go out the power line trail. You don't need to go out to, mm-hmm. to, to, you know, Hell's Revenge or behind the rocks or anything. Like you go out to the power line trail and then that's where, that's where this, this, yeah. the mattresses are, <laughs> the boats, you know. All that sort of jazz. So that's yeah. yeah, that's that's been that's been super fun. That's been that's the part that's gonna kind of I want to be my life's work is the stewardship part. Just for for those uh following along, Dave responded to my text finally. <laughs> oh, did, oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. What do you say? Uh he he literally said that he's going to take our text history to the doctor and try to figure out why he hasn't responded to my texts. <laughs> oh, funny. Good. See, that's that's a cute answer. That's funny. It's, but that's Dave, though. Like, it's never yeah. just. Sorry, no. I was busy. Oh. It's he's always got a, a creative side to it. Which is uh, really yeah. Have you been out to the ranch? ranch? So I was supposed to head down for Red Bull override, but just schedules didn't line up, and so I did not get down there in time. But are I they still been doing? Yet. Is Red Bull going to do it out there? Because I know that they've they've got they've got black rifle ties and black rifle or mm-hmm. or whatever uh pastrana just flipped over to black rifle so black rifle i think is a sponsor for the race car not the ranch okay and so i think red bull override rented the ranch to to, okay. to put on the event i'm hoping yeah i just didn't know there was there seemed to be a lot of you know black black rifle still. seems to be uh signing up a lot of people recently i, I feel like i've seen more and more from their motors oh, well one of the dudes was out there when i was there like jared Aaron, one of the owners, was out there picking up his car and taking laps out there when I was there. That sounds. I don't know. Right sure that. I might be. I might be letting huge industry secrets. I don't know, but that's yeah. that. that I'll send them an big. email. They can sponsor the show. <laughs> we're we're <Hey>. available. <laughs> so I opened. Uh, I opened the Rally Ready website just because yeah. I, I wanted to. I couldn't remember the name of their dog rescue, and I wanted to look for dog rescue. Rally rescue. Yeah. Rally, Rally rescue, and I got a pop up that says. Hey there, I'm Dave, the owner. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm writing a... Uh, the, the hardest part for me to remember thing. is because their promotional <laughs> marketing emails come from Dave, uh, is I have to look at my inbox and be like, wait, is that an actual email for Dave or is it a marketing email? Because I need to... No, okay, no, that's marketing. I just want to... But that's chatbot. He's got chatbot work. Well, not always. Hey, oh, Dave. See, yeah, he pops uh, up. Uh, how do you get <laughs> your hair so silky? <laughs> oh, we're going to. Uh... Oh, man. this. So for everybody <laughs> listening, go to rally. What is it? Ready? Rally. Rallyready.com and yeah. chat with the chat bot and, uh, and tell them we sent you <laughs> and tell them, tell Dave to get his ass back on our show. Uh, yeah, but no, say uh, something cute. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A, a limerick, uh, a, a pun. Dave, Dave is a fan of puns for sure. Dave is definitely and if you can type in an accent, he'll enjoy the crap out of that. <laughs> if you can type in an accent, kudos. Yeah, if you can uh, type in an accent, get on gambler500.com. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Show me how to do that. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Is this... Okay. Back to your notes. Ian, oh, we don't. The, the notes are just. I'm going to interview, okay. interview myself. The show notes, the show, the show notes <laughs> yeah. are uh, they're, they're bowling. So, numbers, but if you right. want to hit all these, hit them. My, my question that I came up with was what is the best, worst modification? Like, because everybody modifies, everybody does something. So, what's the one that you saw was like, that's the best worst thing I've ever seen. It, it's to be honest, it's it's an endemic issue with with p- what people think uh, how how to build an off road car, and that's a lift. Uh, people people should not be lifting cars. People for the most part should not be lifting trucks or jeeps. Uh, lifts uh, for the most part um, only uh, limit travel and put more stress on your drivetrain components. Um, so especially in a car situation, those are only exasperated. Um, but by most lifts, just, you know, you're just taking the stock, stock components in, in, in basically, uh, uh, putting the spacer in the spring, and then you're shoving it down. You get no travel. 
And then your CV is at a dangerous joint. So now you've got a point of failure. Yeah. And you actually don't get real, uh, you don't get real clearance. Then that only comes from tires. So the best thing you can do to get clearance uh, um, or, or and lift at the same time is with a sawzall. And so, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, lifting anything is unless you're talking about an actual suspension, which right. is something that, that's different. So either long travel or converting it to a solid axle. Um, but at the end of the day. You know, um, you would be surprised by what a stock Corolla can do, what a we've all seen what a stock Toyota pickup can do. Yep. Top Gear, uh, 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 you know, it was the first one to at least demonstrate it. And a whistling diesel came in and put a big punctuation mark on it with, <laughs> you know, without the, the everyone's kind of, you know, sus, sus, you know, Hollywood kind of suspicion to it, you know. Right. Um, you know, that's, you can have way more fun in a stock car than, than a lifted and modified one. The, What's the, the fun- worst lift you've seen? The worst lift? Uh, we just saw the worst, lift, the worst lift is the best, which is like either hockey pucks as body lifts or tennis balls in the, in the, uh, coil spring. What? Oh, oh. oh yeah. Oh, that's been around. That's a redneck. That's a redneck trick. That's that been tennis balls in the coil spring. Yeah. Yeah. But to I be honest, that it works. It, it it works, and and it, it's it's better than a lot of the stuff that's out there. But the, I mean, the wor- okay, worst lift is is uh, is IFS bracket lifts. So Tacomas, mm-hmm. uh, uh, fifteen hundred Chevys for the most part. That that those six inch, ten inch, twelve inch drop brackets that are putting your IFS suspension, which inherently isn't yes, terrible, no. but once you <laughs> cantilevered it down, now oh, now sorry. everything else is at the wrong angle. And it's just far weaker. And so you, and it looks just silly and stupid. Those huge abomination plates that sit like, yeah, as close to the ground as the the front diff did before they lifted it. It's a oh, fucking hysterical. Chris, Drop. when you lift the suburban, don't, and it's don't always do paired with 10 inch lip blocks in the back. Like it's, and no, <laughs> and no sort of stabilizer or wrap bar or anything. On <laughs> always paired with the big lip blocks. Uh, but I mean, so yeah, that's that's my thing. Those are the worst lifts. I don't like. I mean, I I think, and it's so funny because everyone going to Iceland and the Arctic truck going back to Arctic trucks uh, is, I think, a business model that should, I'm trying to get Dave from uh, uh, Dirt Every Day to start this business because he's such a genius fabricator, um, and he's got marketing potential with his platform. But to start an Arctic trucks North America because all they they don't lift stuff over there. You know, they have Grand Cherokees, brand new Grand Cherokees on 35s. They just go in and they modify the, the seam welds and the bumpers yeah. and you've got 35s under there and you've got real clearance, especially in the okay. snow, you know, the, 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 where your, where your diff clears, that, that's all that matters. And so, but that's not an easy solution in a box that you can ship to someone or right. easily mm-hmm. bolt on that to actually take craftsmanship and the, you know, the guts to start cutting factory sheet metal. Right. But, the thing um, is a lift kit is just following instructions for the most part yeah. versus seam welding you know, cutting and boxing things out and actually like engineering them to work is yeah. Go look at go look at race trucks. A science yeah. and a uh, and 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 building blocks are two different things. I uh, my favorite ones are always the excursions that the Arctic also, truck guys do. What what would you call it? You can't call it Arctic trucks because they fucking it's not the Arctic and you can still call it Arctic. Trucks. They have them in they have it in Dubai. They have an Arctic yeah. trucks in Dubai. Yeah. They just drive on sand. It's just a brand. You know, it's a good brand that you can drive one in Forza. So I mean I I have I <laughs> yeah yeah I love that truck. One of the I few love- places it's it's legal and acceptable to, to drive an Ebre. Yeah. Those are my good. tires. Are those the same as yours? Those, they have 49 by 21s. Those are the same ones that I have on my Land Cruiser. They're so big. Oh, 49 how, by 21 is a fucking ton of tire. I also well, love how small the wheels are. <laughs> I could just, ooh, those are probably 16s, 17s. 17s. Yeah. I have those, 17s. On, I have 17s on mine too. Mine are the same. And I got, I got Axle Tech Portals and then uh, EM West uh, Kamali. Uh, so you I don't portals? think portals. I got portals, baby. Yeah, okay. the romper stomper. Oh, yeah, you gotta pull up, pull up the Instagram. You can see that the romper stompers on there. Here we go. Okay, I have so many questions about portals. Um, do portals? How much drivetrain loss did you experience? Do you th- suspect from the portals versus just from the well, actual tires? It's on a. 
Land Cruiser Land. that's underpowered anyway, so he probably didn't okay. notice. Shut um, your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Are they, are do are you they? drive past a farm? Do you drive past a farm <laughs> and, and look at every John Deere tractor and say, well, no. that's a piece of shit. It's only got 80 horsepower. How's of course not. No, gearing. So yeah. those portals, those portals give one to one, uh, one to one and a half gear reduction over again. Oh, it, it, maybe. What's up? Oh, oh yeah, it's yeah, on the yeah. 62. Oh, dude, I'm on TikTok, man. Uh, Okay, what kind of maintenance does a portal require? I I don't know, none yet. None, none yet. I don't know. Maybe I should be. I'll ask. Fred actually helped develop those for Axle Tech, and those are still on. That's that's my original uh, leaf spring suspension. What's well, got? I, I love got, it. It looks bouncy. <laughs> a little bouncy. Well, but it helps with the axle wrap, so it's still it's still spring under, which is insane for forty nines and like basically flat springs. But the portals give it five and a half inches of lift. And then I wanted to cut the shit out of the Land Cruiser uh, just to piss off, you know, Land Cruiser people. people. <laughs> Even though I, I have a, an FJ40, I have another FJ60 that's completely stock and an 80 that's my daily, but I also uh, have a sense of humor. Um, so that's why when I drove my Gladiator, all I would do is shit on Jeeps all the time because I own one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that thing, that thing's stupid and it gets around fine. It'll, it'll do 60 miles an hour. It'll in low... And low, low, and I've got some four to one TK skiers for it. I haven't put in it yet. Um, mm. But in low, low, as it is now, it'll crawl up a tree. It, you can't stop it. In the snow around here, you take it down to zero PSI because of double bead locks. And it just, it crawls around like a tank. It's, it's unstoppable. Did you do the 49s and the portals at the same time? Or did you run something else before it you know, together? Yeah. Yeah, the company that made the portals and the axles reached out to me, messaged the page, said, hey, we want to get involved with the gambler. And I was mm. like, cool, write me a check. And they were like, no, I don't want to write a check. I'm going to do something with products. I'm like, cool, send me some axles. And then those showed up in a crate. Well, uh, what the hell do you do to air up 49s from zero PSI? Well, that, no, it's easy to do it. Though It's sitting at zero PSI right there. Really? What do you, wait, what do you usually run them at? Like I don't 30, know. 25? He doesn't no. know. Like, oh, yeah. no. so I just use my little Smitty built uh, uh, compressor. I mean, I'll, I'll fill them up to five PSI typically, I guess, for running around. But I've driven it around at zero. Uh, so you, you effectively made geez. your own Sherp. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I did a cab over version of it, and it looked a lot more like a Sherp. <laughs> All right. Well, it'll look a lot more like the cab Sherp over page. If you, yeah. if you drive it straight into a pond and, and just cruise across it, then it'll really look like a Sherp. I would be curious to see if it actually would float. If 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 it was on a samurai, I'm sure it'd float. But that big old heavy that sixty is. How, do portals, but honestly, it doesn't. They add a lot of weight. How much is it? Is it like neutral weight or is it like? Because it's, it's the axles. The, same the axles are like the axles are have to be eight hundred pounds a piece. <laughs> so no, they, yes, it adds weight. <laughs> it adds yeah, weight. yeah, yeah. The axles had to so be forty nine. <laughs> Because if I, I can carry a stock Toyota uh, Land Cruiser axle, uh, you know, it must be, I don't know, 300 or something. I don't know. I can pick it up and carry it across the shop. The, it, it, it's a struggle for three people to carry those those, <laughs> those tons with the axle techs on them. Because they're eight feet wide. The thing, I right. I, I, I did it, everything is as, as, as egregious as what would have been really smart would have been make them narrower they build them to spec make them narrower and build it for 40 inch tires because then 40 inch tires dude you could go rip the rubicon um and i wouldn't have had to cut as much sheet metal and that would have been such an amazing truck but that's not very gambler you know so mm -hmm. it's like we had to make something obscene fred told me not to do it and <laughs> i said with it so and then, then and then I, if fred says i've no, regretted you say it yes. i've regretted it ever since mm. Oh, but they just built that Ranchero Toyota thing on on uh, 58. If you're on their page, there it is. Oh man, that's uh, a Sherp. So that is in fact that's, that's about Sherp, the proportions yeah. of a Sherp. Yeah. I love the art. I've never actually logo. taken that. I've never taken that canoe out anywhere. I was going to say a, if you flip it, it upside down, does it float on? The <laughs> oh. uh, I do all those on my phone. I have a I have a app called You Doodle. Whoa! Ooh. Whoa! Your phone's a palm tree. Oh no! <laughs> it's also uh, the same wave as we go over the backdrop over the entire again. time. Well, 
Chris and I were talking. I'm, I'm taking this from my my wife's office, and there's like a metronome and like some antique clocks and stuff behind me, and it just didn't look very gambler. Mm. No, no, definitely not. Would you say the Dirt Every Day thing was called? Uh, if you go on there, uh, Dave's or Fred's Instagram, it's it's a it's a Toyota pickup truck that they took a uh, Ranchero skins the the cab still toyota and they put toyota skins on to make it look like a truck and they were gonna make a race truck and i was like that's perfect and bring out the hoopty cross and race with us and then they did this to it which you're about to see it's gonna and take a hot full, full length suspension on 58 inch uh mickey thompson um what's their baja xl baja pros or whatever what do you get 50 uh, are 58 are exclusively like mud racing and like monster truck tires I, I think you can do anything you want at, except for do like actual trails once you get to 58. So that's the Shit. thing about the cruisers. It's no, it's so wide. It, it wouldn't, I would be scared to take it down the Rubicon just because at that point you're not trying to get in between obstacles. You're just driving over obstacles mm. and it's, it would be, it'd be a, a, yeah. I mean, everybody talks about like Dana 60 is being full with, but what you're talking is like, insanity yeah, what the actual fuck is that <laughs> it's so cool i was talking to dave uh, the other night on the phone and he said it's one of the favorite is one of his favorite things he's ever built he said it runs dope and it's running the 22r uh inline four on that thing so you were, mo- you were, you were mocking my what did they my do? inline six what what did they gear it to to do that i don't i don't know um <laughs> something I run 488s with the one to one and a half. And so it ends up being something obscenely low. Um, but I'm sure they're doing something similar, but it's just, it's it's just, it's just gear reduction. So, you know, if you're not trying to go, you know, 80 miles an hour, uh, you know, I bet that thing probably tops out at 40 or something, but it can probably, you know, crawl over anything. That thing's dope. Dave's just dirt head Dave, right? Dirt head Dave. He's got the same pickup on his, I think. It's the same image. And, for anybody who's not watching Dirt Every Day, that's something you got to go do. Uh, I, we've been on the show probably four or five times. I got to host a week's worth of Dirt Every Day extras uh, when they came and built a truck in my shop. Uh, and they, But they are the, the best team and the two most real dudes. They do everything themselves, and they are as nice and as cool in person as – if you get, we want, you want to try to get that? They come on the show. We've uh, we, we've corresponded a couple times and uh, oh, okay. we're, we're still trying so to line it up. The, so. the the Tate referral might add more weight to it though. Probably will. Emmy was my teammate us. when we went against them on Shift Talkers. Uh, Emmy and I were a team against Fred and Dave. And Hosted we by Jeff Walker. Who's our yeah, editor? Yeah, oh, you had Jeff who's our editor? He's our editor. <laughs> uh, you're shitting me. Yeah, we, yeah Jeff we, and I uh, go back and forth on, uh, on Instagrammies. Uh, yeah, he's um, a great dude. It, it, it's his website on which our our podcast lives the universe, universe? yeah that's that's oh, jeff holy smokes man i love this world this is so fun i was selling <laughs> roofing shingles six years ago guys roofing shingles and now i'm rubbing <laughs> shoulders with with the with automotive royalty this is great <laughs> on fucking motor trend there you go yeah yeah you're on motor trend yeah well, well i used to watch i used to watch dirt every day yeah. Like I was religiously, it was my show. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm like hosting it and I have the, I have their big, I have one of their trucks here. It's mine now. Yeah. Those are crazy. Dude, those wheels are nuts. I, I enjoy the crap out of dirt every day. Actually. They, they are, they're dope. And the, they're the Baja bug episodes always get me. I want a bug really bad. It's, I think dirt. There every be, day, there's another one coming up. That's the manifestation of what we would do if, if we were just, left to our own devices you know? well, they don't do that shtick the discovery channel shtick like they're very their dry humor is letting everybody in on the joke like they'll do that dry kind of like okay what are we gonna do next like you know sort of thing and they're, they're <laughs> very they're very real and cool i don't think they they're not in it for the money or the fame they just uh, want to build cool shit Chappelle yeah correct yeah. me up baja bugs and central part of a balance breakfast <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's no lighting on the front of that bug whatsoever. There's no, no. LED bars. There's nothing. As a, I'm assuming the sun's setting. <laughs> if I won the lottery, the first thing I'd buy is a is probably a Baja bug and throw like a, a Porsche like flat six in the back. Well, so, so that, this is in line with what they do. Is is buy no just buy you need to buy twenty Baja bugs and then like give them all to your friends because then you have like a Baja bug club. 
I could just How much fun would fill that my back. See? Well, it would only take about five to fill my backyard. But so we we we've talked to Len Woodward on there the show go. before, and she she has a friend who has a hanger in Moab, and so she bought a Suzuki XL7 for oh, yeah. dirt cheap. Well, yeah. they collectively. Yeah, they they collectively bought one for dirt cheap. Who was it? Was her Aaron Robbins? And then I think other friends. I don't, I don't think everybody's a, a journalist. It's but they, somebody who has a plane that flies them to Moab. From... Well, the plane's errands. Oh, yeah. well. <laughs> but that's the brilliant part of it is now she has the Suzuki pre-positioned in Moab. So whenever she, whenever they want to go, they go. And it's, I, I, that's well, the brilliant I, part. I'd like a, a Baja bug pre-positioned in my driveway. <laughs> Oh, you need to run errands around here. Oh. oh my gosh. Sorry, I found videos of jumping stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be you'll you'll not be surprised on where it took place, Ross. Wait, what, what stuff? You jumping stuff? Jumping stuff. I, I saw a dog jump. So okay, it's, it's definitely it in Hoonigan's parking lot. Oh, little oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Here the oh, shatters itself. That was I'm in the hot rod. Oh that's yeah, me driving. That's me driving number fifty two there. <laughs> Is that a? So I got to I got to move for some reason. My outlet wasn't working to charge my. That was a fun day. What What is the dog car? Is it a? Uh, that is a uh, KJ uh, the Liberty Chevy Tracker. She, yeah, but, he's, uh, but that's CJ Cromwell. He's he's a legend. Uh, he, he converted it to a solid axle in the front. Um, and then so much the stuff outfit. in the air. That Cor- Corvette is done, it looks like. Oh, yeah. No, he put it back together and then proceeded to light it on fire a couple times. Uh, oh, my God. A couple times? Like the first time they yeah. do it? Yeah. So- he just kept lighting it on fire and then they kept putting it out and then he kept going back out. I feel like Gambler lives the mantra that the best off-roader is the one you care the least yes. about. Uh, yeah, with the lack of mechanical sympathy. Yeah, like that's absolutely, like Top Gear dropping Hiluxes off everything and burning them and everything and drowning in the sea. Dude, it's even better with the background. <laughs> that was funny, baby. <laughs> what happened? You, you, were, literally... you were like in and out as you move through the space so it looked like you were teleporting through a, a beach and a palm tree like it was... I, I, I can't wait to see that and then when video. you close the door the door would magically appear and then it would go so away funny. like it was there's some space time stuff going on there well yeah i actually i'm in my gym shorts too which is funny uh i just took my 12 year old gym uh right before i got on uh and then but for some reason my charger's like pissy with me i might have gotten like wet or something so i'm sorry about that <laughs> you but dropped it in the yeah. fucking ocean behind you yeah this just dies you, you've nowhere. done the entire show from the beach it makes sense that <laughs> your equipment wouldn't be working well oh that hey, was, hey now that i've was still so got funny. one i've still got one testicle <laughs> <laughs> that's Ooh, very personal there yeah, yeah right now. <laughs> i can do that <laughs> Only the guy who has survived can make the joke. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's how I got diagnosed. Uh, my buddy had a, this is probably too much. He had like a cyst or a, a lump in his prostate or whatever, like the size of like a, a baseball. And he basically said, yeah, I, the doctor said, I absolutely have prostate cancer. He's never seen something like this where it wasn't prostate cancer. And I was like, well, we're both elk hunters. And so I was like, maybe we could contact the Make-A-Wish Foundation and they could send us on a cool elk hunt. And um he took that joke okay um but the doctor cleared him like three days later and told me he didn't have cancer and then about a week and a half later after that my doctor told me i had cancer and so i think god uh, was listening and didn't appreciate my sense of humor so uh, by the, ca- the best thing you can have. yeah casual reminder to uh to self-check absolutely 100 percent. that's how i found it myself i found it super duper early and it made all the difference in the world yep so all the i'm guessing most of your audience is dudes is dave texting you back or something yeah he is <laughs> was that dave yeah did he get our messages through his uh through his website he, he goes i this just accidentally happened in the middle of a staff meeting today and it's the black rifle coffee subaru going flying by the camera as the camera pans up to reveal a helicopter 
following right behind. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, it just randomly happened. To I love that guy. I only imagine a staff meeting at Rally Ready as Dave sitting at a at a big like judge's desk and a whole bunch of dogs sitting there and him just talking to an There's audience. Actually, of dogs. other people there too. Though. I know, I know there are, but you can. Uh, you can. I'm supposed they, to. Be there they've got a great stuff. outfit out there, and they've got like, oh god, who's our instructor? Who's such a stud? Rob. Rob was did all of our classroom stuff. Um, I'm such an idiot. Uh, I'll find Andrew. I think is their driver, and he came out and partied with us every night. And he's so funny. Dude, everyone there was so great. It was so much fun. I, I just, highly recommend it. You got the, the ability to go out there um, and take some laps with those guys. They're super pros and super. Fun. My my response to him was, "Homie, you live in heaven. Like it just." No. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. If it could be a little cooler in the summer in Texas, yeah, yeah. it'd be <laughs> on perfection. And, and I have a problem with they don't have any public land down there, and so I, yeah. you know, for me that's constricting for what we do, and then for hunting for what I like to do in recreation. So everyone likes to talk about Texas well, hunting, but like you're hunting farm animals down there, and you're doing you know off roading is an off road park. You know, for me, I like exploring new areas. Like well, I cannot recommend Connecticut on on those. Uh, <laughs> premise so kansas is also out we have less than <laughs> yeah, we still got more public land than 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 texas texas is like 0.1 percent of the state that's public. right where kansas is at too we're down there oh, like no, the bottom three yeah oh really oh okay. I, I think mine is, is even 0. 0.0 and then there's like a oh. it's all cattle ranches and and farmland so then yeah. nobody yeah would. Oregon is literally half. It's like 50% public land. So yeah. once you get on the other side of the mountains, you basically just go wherever the hell you want. And the mountains themselves are, are, are public property for the most part too. So nice. Yeah. I always joke about like, once I'm West of Denver, then I can start to think about doing stuff off road in Connecticut. Well, point you know, we thought about buying 8%. property out here, but it's like, dude, like you buy a property, like I, I don't need to buy a property. You can literally just go drive out in the middle of nowhere and it's yours as well. Yeah. That's my, my favorite thing is talking people through BLM, uh, how often you have to move on Bureau of Land Management land. Like oh, yeah. it's, it's two weeks. You can't come back to that spot for another two weeks, but you can go find yeah. another spot that you could stay at. Like it's it's so great. Like it's really, as long as you have the, uh, the correct setup for it, it can be it can be fantastic. Well, that's why I always think it's weird when I hear about like these East Coast overlanding groups i'm like what do you do like <laughs> there you go so we've, we've had the guys on from uh mountain state overland they're based out of west virginia okay. and what west virginia i think actually has quite a few trails and roads. they do and you can also go like not that north, far and start like trans america trail yeah okay. north north georgia all right i just don't like the term overlanding like as i you know, i grew up car camping yeah uh, it's I, I catchphrase think, of all catchphrases i think a majority of guys are they either want to run trails or they want to car camp the yeah, actual like yeah. I, personally my definition of overlanding is there has to be international borders crossed as well so like the people that are crossing mm-hmm. countries and uh, throughout europe and I like, that, I like that rule too yeah like um so yeah you're seeing that there's an awakening kind of like there there was a a, a self awareness that like the the firearms community got it got so tactical and so intense that all of a sudden there was like a rejection to that and yeah. people started going kind of like easing up on on trying to be so broed out they start wearing jeans again and not you know tactical, the tactical pants pants. Yeah. yeah the off-road community did the same thing it went so extreme and then everybody reeled back and you can tell in the parking keepers. lot who the real off-roaders are and who the people are that are just are you know, putting accessories on well because uh, they're not usually in the parking lot <laughs> that too that too that's a fair uh, point but you know no i don't know man i guess yeah i'm i'm blessed i shouldn't be an asshole about that sort of stuff but and some people <laughs> need to find 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 like-minded people and it's not always easy so parking lots of good are good places for that but let's you know I, somebody I, called me out for gatekeeping the other week because i was like oh if your truck doesn't have scratches on it you clearly haven't been you know really off-roading it's like i do that too I, i've never i've never seen a, a truck that was like really wheeled that hasn't gotten some scratches so I made a post like that my, my post says you're not dentist scratches. No scratches. you ain't been nowhere and then i had a bunch of people get mad at me they're like i'm just a good driver and i was like well, <laughs> that's not, no, that I, means I, that you're doing stuff that's 
too comfortable in my opinion and uh and i'm biased and chris i'm gonna scratch shit out of bourbon next time no you're that. not i have four kids they'll scratch it enough <laughs> i don't need extra help oh you should have seen my gladiator <laughs> i took my gladiator through the rubicon and it was a beat to it mm. beat the living shit uh as it should be and so uh, yeah i i sold it at about a ten thousand oh. dollar deficit the dealer was like yeah we'd give you about ten thousand dollars more if it just wasn't so beat to shit yeah they're so, gonna have to do some touch up uh, but fair enough like not just touch up <laughs> like replace fenders and every every <laughs> every cross member and every eight inches of frame was just scraped and bent and did bent you it. so great like your gladiator no uh, it's the perfect Moab. <laughs> it's is like it? a street legal. It's a street legal gator. Uh, I don't like Jeep ownership. I don't like waving to people uh, constantly <laughs> that I don't. I don't relate to. Like I, I, I relate to like a, a scratched up suburban more than a, a Jeep. Uh, you know, with you know, that's obviously you know they just bought it because it's cute or whatever. And that's fine. They can do that. Jeep owners I don't judge them for doing that, but I don't want to wave at you like. Toyota owners give a thumbs up if you see somebody coming the other way. That's well, the best. Depends on the vintage of the Toyota too. Like the older it is, the bigger the thumbs up, the longer the thumbs up. Like I'll make yeah. a point. Yeah. It's if a mom in a 200 series, like I'm probably not. I Yeah, I agreed. I, I'm waving at a mom in 200. Kidding? What's up, mama? What's up? No. Uh, have you talked to your wife about that this? Now. That is not what I meant. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I went over the Rubicon uh, in the Gladiator, sure. and any every raise into Toyota that would pass me in the direction, I would be like, "I don't really drive a Jeep. Like, I know I'm driving Stop a Jeep, at me. but I'm not a Jeep guy." And I feel like I'd explain. They're like, "Okay, bro, like, sweet." And then all these JK guys showed up at Buck Island with AR-15s, blasting music and blasting, shooting across the lake. And I was like, "I don't be really affiliated with these assholes." Yeah. That's- uh, that's over the it top. Was, there, they, Jake, JKs ruined the Jeep scene. Uh, JTs and JLs just put a nail in the coffin. Uh, <laughs> what about my, an LJ? Oh, oh wait, which one's the LJ? That's the two door unlimited that was based on the TJ. Oh yeah, those are two thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any TJs? TJs are sick. Like yeah. LJ, and, yeah, you can't argue. I think YJs are my favorite Jeep just because they're unloved and they have square headlights. But yeah, the TJ <laughs> is the, the off-road best. world is LJ is, is a and the LJ is the best TJ. So yeah. yeah, LJ is peak Jeep, peak. Well, that's peak. peak, peak. Fred Fucking didn't hits. Fred take the first JL and turn it into an LJ? Really? Oh, did he? I, I thought know. that was a dirt everyday thing. I thought maybe they, he, no. I think he took a he took a JL UR. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. I, and I, then turned I, it into I, a, a, an right. LJ by, by welding in the door. proxy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. LJ is best. LJ, a tacky LJ Rubicon the manual would have been a buy and hold like five years ago. You just described the Sahara truck. Oh, I think I fried my charger, guys. I just bought this stupid computer. Are you dying on over there? Well, yeah, but it got. That's all right. It's it's done like water. an hour and a half, so it's full of water. My, my my eighty series leaks. The the sunroof leaks. Yeah, yeah. I I sealed mine because of that. <laughs> I just bought this freaking oh, no. computer, so and you have I think to I fried the charger. Put the eighty in a pool of rice. Yeah, you can put the eighty series in a pool of rice. It'll get all the water right out of it. Yeah, I'm not dry right this up. Conversation yet. <laughs> just dry right up. Oh. You say you're not uh, done with our conversation yet? So that would, that would be who's who's that in not Instagram YouTube guy that does all those crazy like like I filled my pool with Jello type shit. Oh, I don't know. My kids watch yeah, it, but like you know, we get a lot of hits. I drove my eighty into a pool of rice. Yeah, trying to get all the water out of it. Yep. Makes sense. No. Yep. They wouldn't. So, well, sweet. So yeah, so Tate, what's uh, what you got planned in the future for gambler shenanigans? Um, so hoopy cross is one of our big focuses right now, and that's that's our rally cross stuff. And so that's that's a timed event. Once we stopped racing, you know, mildly, uh, we we decided that this is a great opportunity to bring cheap, affordable grassroots racing to the scene because uh, before. You know, it's SCCA and it's other, you know, associations kind of scattered everywhere. And, and they're all, 
bless their hearts, uh, run typically by by racing nerds, right? It's, it's yeah. It's someone at the top of the game, the top of the rally cross deal, and they decided that they uh, wanted to be, you know, do it their way. And and so usually that had more rules, more constraints, more everything, because everybody kind of cared about being the best. And we were like, let's just run it backwards from that. And make it just about seat time because only one person mm-hmm. wins and there's yep. six, 80 people out there and it's all about fun. And so if you, if you don't care and it's, and it's free because you show up in a geo Metro and you're racing and you're, you're going against Subarus or even an XJ Cherokee or something, did you know, we know you're slower. So like it releases all pressure. And so you just, you're just out there banging gears and having fun. You're racing what you have. Uh, and the way we set these tracks up is that you're rarely going over 30 miles an hour, you know, maybe 40 max. And so, but in a driving a, a slow car fast is funner than a fast car slow. Yes. Uh, yes. But you also don't need fancy safety equipment because when, you know, we looked at the lemons model of stuff and yes, it is, it is a cheap way to get into racing, but you're still 5k into safety equipment and cages and, and all that jazz, which is super mm-hmm. important. It looks super fun and I want to go race lemons for sure. Um, but, uh, but we just, we wanted the, the layman, we wanted the, you know, like, you know, me when I work and pumping gas at a gas station and, you know, and, and, you know, can barely afford my, my dots and pickup truck, you know, to be able to take it on a weekend, pretend I had a race truck, uh, you know, and, and, and not ever feel like, you know, we are very, um, open there's no gatekeeping um or any of that sort of stuff because especially because the shittier the car you bring the more you know welcomed you are so you know you'll see yeah class 11 Buick. Stuff, good riviera in there right like <laughs> yeah you know, does. hey there's m's there was m's uh miata in there too yeah buddy yeah yeah buddy uh yeah and buddy vintage cars and there's mine uh you know but that old mustang was you know cheap as heck and and a lot of times it's on the grams, you know, I show cars that people will engage with, um, yeah. you know, and so that's people. So like, yeah, was changed, man. And it's like, no, 99% of the people that show up are just in shit boxes with little spray paint on them. Yep. You know, the stuff that's going to get views, uh, and you know, on the internets is the stuff that, that I have to show, which is the egregious stuff. Wait, uh, so, yeah, I'm, Cosworth Mustang. What's that? Is this a Cosworth? The red and black thing from a brewing company? No, that's a Ford Escort. Okay, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's just your standard uh, U.S. spec okay. uh, Ford Escort by my, my buddy Matt Cowart. That's actually my school bus right behind it. Well, oh, it was my school bus. It's Andy's. Say, so, how many vehicles do you actually own? Good mm. question. Because sure I feel my, like... My wife's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, about 12 about 12 okay about 12 yeah so would that be a about a baker's dozen yeah i don't know what a baker's dozen is so it's yeah 13 okay uh yeah <laughs> my, my wife tries, tries a, she's a fancy lawyer so she's got a nice you know z71 tahoe but all my stuff's garbage mm. well with the exception i got that bronco thing but i'll tell you what man the the uh just the way that our the tax system and the economy is right now, like I, I didn't really lose any money on on the Jeep. I buy it's cheap for me to buy new cars. Everyone should just be self employed. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> day. Um, but like you know, I don't know. This country's set up. It's funny you're talking about the average price of cars, uh, and it, it it's one side of me is like. It's, our society is screwed up and that that's a that denotes your success or somehow your happiness in this world is, right. is how nice car you drive um i get more pleasure by driving my piece of shit all drive matrix around and people ignoring me uh, <laughs> and it's such a freeing thing to just step out of the game because if you're trying to drive the most expensive car the biggest truck the biggest tires or or, or the fastest car like you're always going to lose that game yeah. uh you know never gonna have so why mm-hmm. play can't win when you can just like sit back and and just enjoy just i don't know the, and, and if they have those nice cars give you pleasure or modifying cars does that's great you know do it but if you're buying it as a status symbol like i would look at i would look at where your priorities are you know if you're you know driving a piece of your car is a lot of fun 
Yes, if you have mm -hmm. some people, you know, maybe they grew up in piece of shit cars like you know I did. Yep. Uh, tired of them, um, but uh, but yeah, no, they're they're fantastic. Yep. Well, yep. and the, the, if it's a '90s Toyota, it's not a piece of shit. You can yeah, go get an all-wheel drive Vibe or a two-wheel drive Matrix or Vibe whatever, and with two hundred fifty thousand miles on it, and it's going to outlast you. It goes mm -hmm. thing on and run and run. Yep. I had a Geo Metro. Yeah. What was it? Was it? Suzuki Swift and uh, that's no, it was a Corolla. Oh, oh. <laughs> Or a prism, yeah. I had a geo prism. I didn't prism? have it long enough to get it running well enough. You don't want to play this Corolla game with me, son? No, I should not have. I should not have. <laughs> uh, there's a video of four Corollas going through this off-road section of the the Gambler, uh, and I bought every single one of those. One of them was a prism. And <laughs> <laughs> a Canada called me and said, "Hey, we want to give you ten grand, uh, and we want to show up with our entire company, and you have four cars ready for us." And we're going to paint them up to look like NASCAR cars. And then, you know, and then we're going to like do the gambler as this, like, is this business. Uh, 10 cars you know. for four I cars, 10 grand. So, uh, that's a tough bill in modern four cars. I, that's what I, said. Bucks. I made thousand dollars that day. That was <laughs> you made a ton of money. <laughs> well, but, I mean, I also hosted a giant event, uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and stored the cars. And, you know, I, I looked at, I looked at, twice as many that i bought and so yeah it was it was a lot of time and effort it was a lot of that's, fun that's the oh, kind of company i want to work for though all four yeah, of them made it. yeah they all made it they all survived yeah yeah yeah, yeah and that you deep beat the shit out of these things they were amazing because they, they didn't care they literally mm -hmm. didn't care it's so much fun. fun i wish i wish i could find i could do ten thousand things at the same time or i'll send you the the, the, the uh, of them going through the it looks like the mini Rubicon. Like they're just, and like one of them will get stuck, and then the next one will come up behind them and bump them and try to push Bust. them and push them the rest of the way. I can uh, feel that in my spine. Are we thinking yeah. like 2018? Oh, uh, you'd have to go into my YouTube, I think. And then that, yeah, maybe it was, no, it was probably like 2017. It was the first year, but I, I've repopped it. I recycle a lot of content because not everyone was around back then. And then, uh, uh, you know, sometimes because the YouTube, the algorithm for Instagram and Facebook doesn't show everything to everybody. So correct. Um, okay, I think I think I'm close, or at least it's it. It does look like Mini Rubicon as well. So ah, there it is. You're good. I can't I can't play it though because then YouTube dings us for our video playing a YouTube video. But uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Still image of vibe yeah you're getting the vibe there but yeah one of those is the prism i don't remember and actually that's actually one of the cars that donut media came back the next year and we gave it to them and then so james humphrey and those guys took, <laughs> took it, one of the one of the, the cars the, through the gambler are there four four people in it, and they made it in it too I, lo I love how integrated the skid plate is with the front bumper on the front car <laughs> it's just uh, well, insane it's like a they're bulldozer all, they were all uh, welders so they showed up and they just they they like a production. They they had these things kitted out and and bumpered and skid plated. They just welded all the, the skid plates to the bottom because they're like, we're not going to change the oil ever. <laughs> like <laughs> that's pretty that's fun. So great. Oh, sweet. We'll we'll take. We need to wrap up because uh, eventually okay. Ross turns into a pumpkin because he's East mm. Coast time. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can confirm. What would you like to plug? Oh. Oh, um, uh, being kind uh, to one another, to strangers. I'd say being kind to strangers uh, in traffic because it's something that's so easy to get upset with people. And, and I would say the next time that you screw up and do something stupid in traffic, you sit there and you think for a second and you're like, you know what? I didn't mean to do that. And so have a little bit of empathy with everyone else as, as, they, as they travel this world in, in such weird times. So that's what I want to plug is, is empathy and and. Mm. and Yes. Empathy is a great one, actually. Yeah, that's that's the most worldly plug we've heard, actually. That's great. Yeah. And Gambler 500 whiskey. <laughs> Drown your livers in poison. You might as well be mine. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to do it anyways, go ahead and buy his whiskey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Um, sweet. So it's the Gambler 500 everywhere for uh, 
social media? For social, yeah. It's at the Gamma 500 pretty much everywhere for Tiki Tuckies and the Instagrammies and the Facebookers. Uh, and then Gamma500.com is our website, yeah. which is all that jazz. So there is a lot of fun stuff to look at on Gamma500.com because I and didn't even click through all of it. Saying that. Yeah. Plus merch. Well, awesome this was super like this was usually these are a slog and this was this was super fun the good news is most of our strangers who come talk to us have that response the problem is being able to get strangers to get to this point and not just have my instagram messages and emails end up in their inbox and yeah okay well you're hanging with the right crew and it seems like you guys are doing all the right stuff so uh (sighs) Sure, I'm sure some of those people are going to be begging to get on the show here pretty soon. I hope so. We we doubled sure in our second out. year, so yeah, <laughs> uh, sweet. Yeah, well, I'll pitch it out. Thank you, listeners, for uh, listening to me babble and hang out with these dudes. Yeah, man, it's been fun. These were we, we went some all fucking good stories. Heck sweet, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the legit wrap up. You can rate review this show on iTunes or what is it now? Is it Apple Podcasts? Is it even iTunes anymore? Does that still exist? It's the fucking same thing. I still have an Android because I have a young. I have. Kid. I'm looking at my computer. It, there's an iTunes thing on it. Okay, uh, so you can like and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can go like and subscribe to Gambler Five Hundred as well. Uh, the Gambler Five Hundred on all the socials. Gambler500.com. Follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, and Everyday Driver. I think I'm doing that faster. Mm-hmm. I'm getting, getting I'm better. Getting better. Yeah, getting better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. better. Yep. Uh, Ross is no not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And even in my own definition of overlanding, I'm not overlanding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It was an available handle. Tate, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Appreciate Definitely. you coming on. Appreciate the show. it. It's been a blast. Yeah.